In April, the prairie is like an ocean of green, filled with herds of sheep and cows. In the middle of this beautiful landscape, a shepherd gallops with his horse. In front of him, a wild wolf with a child of about three months in its mouth. Right at that moment, a sudden screeching sound was heard in the sky. An eagle pounced on the running wolf. Everything came to life, the meadow filled with herds of sheep and cattle. One day, 25-year-old Lucas took his wife and his three-month-old son to the area where he used to graze. He didn't realize that there were two wolves silently following them not far away. They seemed to have some plan and were up to something. Wolf howls were heard. Two large gray wolves appeared not far away. They howled loudly. They seemed to have set their eyes on Lucas's flock. The sheepdog tried to charge, but Lucas stopped him. Wolves are cunning by nature. This could be their plan to attract him. As Lucas had guessed, the three wolves had no intention of rushing, but neither leave. They stood still and continued to howl as if they were sending some kind of message. Lucas looked around suspiciously. He looked at his wife and his son, although he was in the midst of the wolves and them for safety. He sent the sheepdog towards his wife and his son. Seeing that the human in front of them was not at all afraid of them, the two wolves let out an angry growl and charged towards Lucas. In the distance, the sheepdog barked furiously. Seeing his master surrounded by so many wolves, he ran to help him. When he left, the two wolves that had been following Lucas began to approach his wife and son. Mary held the baby with a worried face as she watched her husband fight the wolf, completely oblivious to him. They crept forward, getting closer little by little. As soon as they felt they were close enough, one of the wolves jumped up and pounced on Mary. While the other didn't move, the unsuspecting Mary was immediately appeased. The child she was carrying in her arms rolled to the floor. The frightened mother burst into tears. Luckily, the ground was covered in grass, so the boy was not harmed. Mary turned her head to see what was attacking her, but subconsciously she crawled towards the boy. Just then, the other wolf moved suddenly, lunging straight for the baby, picking it up and running off into the distance. Mary froze for a moment, then cried out, Honey, the baby, our son's been taken by the wolf. Turning his face and turning his pale as he heard his wife scream, Lucas tried to run over, but the three wolves in front of him saw what Lucas was trying to do and intervened. By then, the wolf had carried the boy some distance away. Seeing that the wolf took his son, Lucas became furious. At that time, he caught up. He was going to save the woman from the wolf attacking her, but he heard Mary scream loudly, Leave me alone. Save our son. At these words, Lucas gritted his teeth and went after the wolf with the child in his mouth. Another wolf tried to stop him, but Mary plucked up the courage and pounced on him and stopped him. That was the greatest of a mother's love. Blocked by Mary, and instead of fighting back, the wolf broke away from Mary and ran towards Lucas. Although Lucas's baby was only three months old, he still weighed about ten pounds. The wolf was charging and slowing down after carrying the boy for so long. Seeing that the wolf with his son was slowing down, Lucas gritted his teeth and sped up again. But then there was a growl from behind. The wolf, who had gotten rid of Mary, had caught up with him. Facing him, Lucas let out a roar of rage and landed a direct hit. The stick glided over the air and even picked up a strong wind. Seeing those angry eyes and strong body, the wolf chickened him out a bit and only dared him to snarl from afar. When Lucas approached again with his stick, the wolf turned and ran away. Lucas then walked towards the wolf with the child in his mouth. At that moment, the wolf ran to a rock where he placed the boy, panting heavily. His intention was to rest for a while before leaving. The wolf had gray fur. Strangely, he had only one eye. If Lucas were there, he would recognize this wolf. As the one-eyed wolf rested, the black wolf that had blocked Lucas caught up with him. When the black wolf arrived, he grabbed the boy and kept running. And the one-eyed wolf didn't follow him. He was still resting where Lucas was, glancing from time to time at Lucas with the two wolves walking in tandem. The distance between Lucas and his son was increasing. Lucas had been busy chasing and fighting, was already a bit exhausted. As the wolf ran further and further, Lucas got a little anxious. He looked back and saw that the sheepdog had not yet arrived. When he no longer knew what to do, Lucas came up with something. He screamed out loud towards the sky and said, Alina! A few seconds after Lucas's loud cry, an eagle high in the sky suddenly turned and flew quickly in Lucas's direction. Alina landed next to Lucas. Her head rubbed against Lucas's body in a very affectionate way. Lucas stroked Alina's head and kept saying something. He then pointed in the direction of the one-eyed wolf. Clever Alina gave a start. She spread her wings again and flew high into the sky. With a sharp whistle, Alina descended from a thousand meters, staring at the one-eyed wolf. Approaching the ground, she spread her wings. 
The one-eyed wolf was knocked down by Alina, and the baby he was carrying in his mouth fell to the side of him. The baby cried. Alina tried to catch it, but the wolf pounced on him. The carving and the wolf then fought against Alina, who was powerful in the sky. She, too, was not weak on land. She flapped her wings, opened her hooked beak, and pounced. The wolf barked as it ran. As it howled, the pack's response sounded from the forest not far away. It turned out that he was asking for help. The one-eyed wolf looked back at the wolf struggling on the ground and picked up speed again. As long as he and the pack were reunited, not even the eagle could save the boy. Lucas, who was coming behind, also realized the situation. At the critical moment, there was a sudden bark behind Lucas. He turned around and saw Dadao, the shepherd dog of his, coming. Behind Dadao, there were more than ten shepherd dogs. They also knew how to call their friends. On land, the sheep dogs were already fighting the wolves. Dadao ignored them and continued to chase the fleeing one-eyed wolf. Elena had already pounced again and slapped the one-eyed wolf. The wretched one-eyed wolf was trying to get up when Elena immediately came over and closed his mouth with a claw. At that moment, Dadao also arrived, biting the one-eyed wolf's neck, only to see it spasm for a few moments before remaining motionless. Elena and Dadao then arrived to watch over the children while they waited for Lucas. Soon Lucas arrived. He was relieved to see the boy unharmed. He stroked the heads of Dadao and Elena. Three years ago, Lucas planned to buy a sheepdog. He went to the dog market earlier. He chose Dadao at first sight and bought it. One day, Lucas was taking Dadao along a cliff. When Dadao seemed to have something and he dove into the surrounding grass, he turned and barked at Lucas. He wagged his tail like a rattle. He looked like he had found something good. Lucas approached curiously and found a young bird struggling and chirping in the grass. Lucas picked it up and put it in his hand. He looked at it closely, but since the bird was a youngster, he didn't recognize it for a moment. He looked up and found a bird's nest halfway up the hill. The bird must have accidentally fallen from above. When he saw the nest, Lucas froze. From what he remembered, it looked like an eagle's nest. Could it be an eagle chick? Looking at the young bird struggling in his hands, Lucas showed a surprised expression. If this is an eagle chick, it's easy to see why it fell. Under Lucas's watchful care, the young eagle was lucky to survive and began to thrive. The young eagle was later named Elena. For Elena's health, Lucas had studied the eagle's habits and fed her fresh lamb every day. In such good conditions, Elena grew naturally faster than many wild eagles. After all, she was well fed. But Lucas was also a little worried because under his care, Elena had become very tame. In time, Elena would have to go back to nature. He couldn't follow her for the rest of her life, right? This couldn't go on like this. After thinking about it, Lucas planned to train young Elena. When Elena was able to fly, Lucas carried her to the cliff and threw her over it to help her fly. He also caught live animals for Elena to practice hunting. When Elena was two years old, her nature was fully developed. She already hunted for food on her own without need for Lucas to feed her. But she never attacked the shepherd's sheep. Elena accompanied Lucas when he grazed sheep fluttering over the flock, chirping and attacking if she got close to any other animal. Apparently, she had transformed into a shepherd bird. Three years had passed. Elena had become the owner of the sky in the area, and Lucas expected her to leave. She'd fly back to the wild and take to the skies after Elena defeated a few eagles. Her reputation spread far and wide, and no other eagle came to attack her. Thanks to Elena, Lucas had it much easier when it came to grazing. With Elena in the sky and the dow on the ground, Lucas made a very easy job. He didn't expect the one-eyed wolf to take advantage of the situation. Luckily, the dow and Elena were here. For the rest, you shouldn't love animals, but you shouldn't hurt them. The end result is definitely a lose-lose situation. As wild animals have their own love-hate relationship, they're clear about what to love and what to hate. They'll find the opportunity to respond to the favors and take revenge.